During the winter and the spring quarters of 2012, there were a lot of racially biased incidents that were happening on campus, and there was a lot of students who kind of came together and we said, this can't keep happening. So as we were starting to kind of get the community together, I remember very distinctly that we were at an ASG um, Senate. So we're in this ASG meeting, everybody is super angry, people are yelling, people are, don't know why people are angry and there's a lot of confusion and one person raised their hand and stood up and said, you know what? We don't even know the person sitting next to us, right? And we've been yelling at each other. Let's stop for five minutes and get to know one another, and then maybe we can continue the conversation. Um, and I remember that those words are the words that basically just sparked everything, and we recognized the need on campus was really not just these different policies and things happening and initiatives, but we needed to learn to talk to each other. We needed to understand how to build a relationship, and what we needed was dialogue. In less than 48 hours, we planned this huge dialogue to be on Deering, um, and it was amazing. There were over 300 students who came out and we asked for just one hour of their time from 3 to 4 p.m. to come and talk about what's happening on campus. How can we create something like this to be proactive and to be continuous on campus? What can we do? And we realized that there was a program that does do this and it's called Sustained Dialogue. I'm like trying to understand like why do I have this desire and like has it been something that's just been told to me that like this is what I should want or is it something What's that awesome about Sustained Dialogue is that it brings together people from across campus and I've met so many people through the program that I think I probably wouldn't have interacted with otherwise um, except for that space in Sustained Dialogue. You also get to dig deeper into things you wouldn't talk about like race, like religion, like socioeconomic status, like gender, sexuality. And sometimes people think they're experts at certain things and you realize you're not and like it's really cool to learn from others. Dialogue is not something that comes naturally to people. It's something that you really have to learn and I knew nothing about it and then I did sustain dialogue and realized um, if you're having a discussion or a debate you're much more likely to distance people um, and if you're having a dialogue you show that you care about them, you show that you care about what it is that they have to say and you learn a lot more about whatever it is that you're doing together. I would encourage people to just uh, to try to jump in and learn more about the world that they're living in and, and not to be comfortable just being just yourself, not to be comfortable with being who you were yesterday. You'll never know if you never engage different people that challenge what you thought was true. Probably the most important thing that happened in SD for me was when um, people told me I was wrong or that something that I had thought um, they completely disagreed with. And um, that was really like, those are the moments that I remember the most and things that have sort of changed the way I view this campus um, and the people that go here and um, just like my community in general. We are Northwestern's shared formal wear closet. So what we do is we rent out formal wear for free to students um, on the premise that you pay for dry cleaning at one of our um, one of the local dry cleaners where Northwestern already has, relation, has a relationship where we already get a wild card discount, um, and then you bring the clothes back within a two week period. The reason New Threads came about is because um, our group talked about socioeconomic status disparity a lot, and it wasn't that you know we chose to talk about SES status disparity on campus every week. It was that no matter what topic we started talking about, someone would bring up something that was SES related. And it just became really overwhelmingly obvious to everybody that it was a problem on campus. And so, I mean, we literally sat down our second last week and we were like, okay, what can we do about this? If it's something that all of us feel so strongly about, if it's something that all of us see as a problem, why aren't we doing something about it and why is it still a problem? We're founded upon two things, affordability and flexibility. The idea is to help people. So however we can do that, however we can, you know, modify the model on an individual basis, we're willing to do that. Everyone felt really strongly about the cause. Everyone still feels really strongly about the cause, but I mean, it's, it's a lot of work. It has been a lot of work for over a year now, but I mean, it's, it's finally real. It's finally a thing. People are renting clothes, so. People have to stand at this place because like, that's the way it's done. Like, you can't do it anymore. The moments where there was like, the highest tension in the room, ultimately those moments became some of my favorite memories of SD because I think um, it's very hard to find those moments at Northwestern um, without it turning into something very negative. I feel a lot more tied into the community, honestly, because I met so many people I don't think I ever would have interacted with. People who think they'll love it probably will, and people who don't think they have anything to learn probably have more to learn than anyone else. These relationships have carried through since, and it's something that I really couldn't imagine my Northwestern experience without.